Well, welcome back to 42nd Street Pete's Grindhouse. It's Tuesday, and someone's about to get indicted. And all I can say is, I got something to say later on in that subject, but I will open this up. Um, basically, last night or yesterday, we lost Treat Williams at 71 years old to a motorcycle accident in Vermont. Uh, the day before that, we lost Barry Newman, age 81. Um, oddly enough, Charlie had uh, asked me about uh, doing something about Vanishing Point with Barry Newman, so um, I revisited that last night, uh, actually because one of my friends actually had that car, that Dodge Challenger, and the whole premise of Vanishing Point is that uh, this ex-race driver, cop, whatever, played by Barry Newman as Kowalski, has to make it from point A to point B in, like, I believe three days or something like that as a bet for a handful of amphetamines from his dealer. So he goes cross-country on this thing, incurring the wrath of motorcycle cops, patrol cops, um, some familiar faces in there like, uh, oh, shit, um, I'm losing my fucking mind here. Um, Richard Donner, Paul Coslow, Carl Swenson, and also Delaney and Bonnie. And, um, you know, basically it's, you know, him and his encounters going across the Midwest and he's being cheered on by this blind disc jockey, Super Soul, played by Cleavon Little. And um, Cleavon basically, you know, tells him where the cops are going to be hiding this and that. And the other things which incites a mob of people to attack the radio station, beat his uh, assistant bloody, and then try to beat him up only to discover he's blind. Um, it has one of those weird, weird 70s type endings where basically two bulldozers are dropped in the road where he's heading for, and it ends with him basically heading toward these bulldozers and all of a sudden the credits roll. Um, the 70s were pretty famous for some weird downbeat endings, and this is one of them. Um, Barry Newman uh, started a TV series, Petroselli, also. Um, Treat Williams, another great actor. Um, he was in that big monster movie, Deep Rising, with those nasty things that swallowed people and shit out skeletons. Uh, one of my favorite performances uh, of his was in uh, Things to Do When You're Dead in Denver, where he was part of an ensemble cast where he basically played this guy who was completely psychotic and was basically working in a funeral parlor beating up corpses for exercises and actually was the catalyst to start all the, the bad shit going on by basically blowing away the wrong guy at, at a fake police stop and then basically having a death sentence put on him and all his cronies. Uh, some of the others in that uh, film were uh, William Forsythe, uh, Andy Garcia, uh, Christopher Lloyd and some other cool people. So that's one worth seeing. Something else I tripped over um, the other day. I'm trying to think when this thing came out. Uh, this is a 50s film. came out in 1953. It's called Dementia. Uh, it was directed by this guy John... Uh, what the hell was his name here? John J. Parker. And... One of the producers was Bruno V. Soda, who was famous for some of his AIP roles in like Attack of the Giant Leeches, The Wasp Woman, and The Undead. This film is 57 minutes long, has no sound, no narration, just some creepy music, and it follows this girl, um, what the hell was her name? See, none of these people seem to have gone anywhere after this here. Um, the hell was her name? Deet, 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 deet. Adrian Barrett. And this is like, um, it says a surreal, surreal sleepwalk through B-movie hell populated by prostitutes, pimps, and would-be molesters. All photographed by William Thompson from Plan 9 from Outer Space. Um, basically, she's wandering through this netherworld of, you know, weird people. She's picked up by this obvious pimp and then pimped off to the rich man, played by Bruno V. Soda who actually isn't really that fat in this scene. He has wavy hair, a little... Miss Mustache and smokes cigars. And this paper keeps floating around about uh, the stabby stabbing murders. And you see her basically holding what is billed as a stiletto, but it's not a stiletto because the stiletto comes out the front of the knife handle. The switchblade comes out from the side. So she has a rather large switchblade. 
So she's driving around with this guy. He's taking her from club to club with obviously a payoff in mind. When she goes into this delirium thing, the name of the film is called Dementia, actually. So she envisions herself in a cemetery, and she's met by this masked guy carrying a lantern who takes over to her father's grave. And you see her father trying to molest her. And then takes the lantern over to her mother's grave. And I swear to God, her mother is a dead ringer for Hillary Clinton. So if you ever want to see Hillary Clinton get shot, you won't be disappointed. So basically, um, the husband comes back in the surreal scene in the graveyard, sees her laying on a couch in fishnet stockings, dressed provocatively, and finds a smoldering cigar in the ashtray, which obviously isn't his. So basically, he shoots her a couple of times, and then the daughter stabs him in the back, and then comes back to reality, where she basically goes up into uh, the rich man. There's a lot, a lot of point of view shots, a lot of long shots, a lot of wide shots in this thing. But basically, she goes up there, she kills the rich man and throws him out a window. Now, they're on the sixth floor, but the plunge seems to be off a skyscraper. So she goes down there, and the body is surrounded by a crowd, but when he died, he ripped off this amulet that she had, and that's in his outstretched hands. Well, she crawls through the crowd, takes out her switchblade, and saws his hand off. Then the hand's back in the drawer. So this gets weirder and weirder and weirder to the inevitable climax. Again, this film, like I said, had no soundtrack. Well, two years later, an exploitation uh, company picked it up, cut two minutes out of it, and put in this creepy narration by none other than Ed McMahon, co-host of The Tonight Show, and basically called it Daughter of Horror and paired it up with some other films because I think this was on a triple bill. I was trying to figure this out with that whole Master of Terror, Master of Horror stuff. And I think this might have been on a triple bill because The Master of Horror was an Argentine teen film that was like 60 minutes. This was like 60 minutes, so it would have fit on a triple bill. Maybe that's what I was thinking. But it's a weird little film. If you want to just kill an hour of your life, you can check it out. I mean, it's early 50s weirdness, and obviously that you know the first cut of it would have not drawn flies, so of course it was sold to an exploitation guy who beefed it up a little bit and made it even fucking creepier. So, that's available. It's on uh, Kino International, actually. Um, something else that came up, because I was doing a little research on, you know, people that had passed away already in 2023, which unfortunately has been a shitload of them. And I came across this site. Um, this is a transsexual erotic performer. I guess she does DVDs and stuff like that. Not, you know, I follow this anymore, but uh, it was confirmed at death of popular trans performer Kayla Moon, as reported by local news outlets. Kayla was shot to death at a Highland Park hotel in Michigan on June 1st. No suspects have been arrested at the time. Kayla was only 34 years old. This no longer comes as a surprise. While it is still shocking to us, the rate an amount of trans people being murdered by violence, especially trans women of color, continues to increase. Our performers, Chastity Cheeks and Candy Red, were both murdered in the last two months, and the amount of anti-trans rhetoric, anti-trans laws, and the viciousness of the media have to take responsible for this. Um, I don't know why this shit is going on. It's being amplified by the extreme right and... You know, people like Marjorie Green Taylor and Ron DeSantis, who obviously have a personal beef with this whole thing. Um, basically, I don't know what triggers this off. I know probably a lot of these performers make a secondary money as, you know, paid escorts. And maybe that's what happened, because maybe the so-called straight guy who wants to step out a little bit, after he finishes up, is completely and utterly embarrassed and filled with rage and takes it out on the girl. And basically, I'm going to say women, because basically, you're killing women. These people identify as women, and they're being killed in record numbers because, like, I, like the site said, of the, the hateful rhetoric that's spewed out by the extreme right. These people are not bothering anybody. They're trying to make a living. You know, they're human beings and should, should be treated as such. And it's like... You know, I was looking at the last issue with Shock Cinema, and Steve even said in his editorial, it seems that the goal of this upcoming presidential election is based on two things. Abolishing women's reproductive rights and eliminating the, gay, gay, you know, the LBGT community, which is bullshit. I have transgendered fans. I have transgendered friends. 
Um, I don't understand why the hate and the rhetoric is so fucking strong, but when you have people stoking the flames and a bunch of people that are basically have a Neanderthal mindset that anybody different from them shouldn't be here, this is bullshit. And as far as today goes, I hope he's indicted. You know, as someone who's been arrested, I had to post bail to get out of jail. He doesn't have to do anything. And there's two sets of fucking laws in this country for the extremely rich and famous and for the rest of us. And the rest of us get fucked in the ass, obviously. Uh, we have to rise above this and pull together. I'm sorry. Um, if you got an issue with somebody's skin color, sexual preference, gender, whatever, there's something fucking wrong with you. We're all human beings. We're all in this together. And there's just a pile of fucking shit on the right-hand side that keeps stirring the pot and stirring the pot, then stepping back because... God forbid they actually get their hands dirty. No, they just stir up these idiots to go out there and do damage. And I sincerely hope and pray that there's no fucking violence today because we've already seen what Mr. Trump can do when he runs his big fucking mouth. Um, and no, I'm not a Trump supporter. And before you even sit, get that out of your mouth, I'm not a Biden supporter either because honestly, if it's a Trump-Biden deal again, I'm not even going to bother to fucking vote. This is bullshit. It's the same crap over and over again. We all have a right to do what we want as long as we're not hurting anyone. And that's the key word. Nobody's hurting anyone except the fucking haters. So, on that note, rest in peace, Barry Newman. Rest in peace, Treat William. And for God's sakes, treat everybody equally and nice and stop all this fucking hateful bullshit. And that's all I got today. Please be safe. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll catch you on the flip side.